Hey guys, this is Srini and you're watching Python tutorial videos on my YouTube channel, Python for Microscopers. In the previous tutorial, we had a quick introduction to Pandas library uh, that actually deals with data uh, that enables us to do easy data analysis, almost Excel-like of uh, uh, data analysis, much better than Excel, of course, and that's the reason why we are using Pandas. In today's tutorial, let's build on that and let's uh, start looking at data manipulation, like deleting columns, rows, and so on. And the data set that we're dealing with, again, just to remind you all, if you haven't watched the previous video, is uh, basically a few columns here and I have 100 rows. And the first column, it represents the set. Uh, and uh, I have four sets, set one, set two, set three, and set four. And each set has 25 images. And each of this image has been uh, analyzed manually to identify the number of cells that are uh, uh, contained in each of these images. And uh, here is the first column where the manual uh, numbers are reported. The second column is where this uh, individual tried to uh, do this on all of these 100 images, but kind of gave up, smart guy, after the first three uh, images. Uh, basically, that's not the best way to use his time. I totally agree with that. That's why we developed a, uh, a piece of code a couple of uh, tutorials ago, I would say that counts cells automatically using watershed, enhanced by watershed uh, based uh, segmentation. And I changed the one of the parameters uh, three times, and then I captured the total number of cells that are detected in each of this image. Okay, so that's the uh, data set. And of course, uh, manual, there are a few missing uh, values because again, manual, we make our mistakes. We overlooked image 13, for example, and a couple other images. So we don't have any data for that, which is okay because that gives us a chance to understand how to work with uh, uh, missing data in, in this tutorial or in the upcoming tutorials. So uh, let's directly jump in. Uh, first, let's uh, try to do uh, deleting columns, okay? So in fact, the first thing is import pandas as PD, right? And the second line is always data frame. Where, where is your data coming from? So data frame is pandas dot, we already called it PD, so PD dot read underscore CSV. And where is our file located? I think it's in the same folder, manual versus dot csv this is our file name i always run the code first to make sure the file is available yep it's there so, okay so uh, let's uh, start by looking at uh, actually uh, let's create a new data frame okay and let's do because if you look at this there's no point in using manual two column. So let's go ahead and drop that column and assign that to a new data frame. You can always uh, update your existing data frame, but this is again, another way, uh, df.drop, that's it. That's pretty much it. And what do we want to drop? Manual, what's the column name? I could have actually, uh, actually let's do that. Df.print, oh, print, print head. This actually prints the top five data, I mean rows. Again, we are trying to drop manual two, so df dot manual two right there, okay? Now, if I just do this, it's not gonna work. We need to tell that this is a column. So by typing axis equals to one, this is a column. So if I just print this over here, let's do this. Uh, that obviously did not work for some reason. Oh, we are printing df, let's print df. So there you go, the manual two is gone. Okay, now I only have image, manual, and other, other columns. So this is as easy, you know, uh, to drop our columns. Now, uh, if you wanna drop multiple columns, all you need to do is just add multiple columns right here. That's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and do that. DF, uh, uh, let's just do DF2, okay? Equals to DF dot, what do we drop? Uh, and I need to provide that as a list right here. Let's do, if I can type it, manual two. Okay, there you go. And let's drop auto threshold two, for, just for the fun of it, auto th underscore two. 
And that's it. I mean, you get an idea. Uh, and you can keep typing. And axis equals to 1. And now let's go ahead and print the F2, right, dot head. So we should see image, manual, auto, threshold 3, and 4, and so on. So this is how you can drop uh, multiple, multiple columns. You can also insert columns, by the way. Yeah, dropping is easy, so I hope you understand that. Uh, deleting, if you want to call it, but this is basically dropping. Uh, the data and let's actually insert new columns. So let me go ahead and delete all of this and go back to our actual data frame and what should we insert into our uh, data frame? Uh, let's say I want to add uh, I want to add a timestamp for when this is done. Uh, you can actually again uh, uh, group each of these sets and you can say set one has been analyzed on this date and you can add that column and so on. but let's for now let's keep things simple, okay? So uh, we have this and uh, let's just say, okay, I want to add a new column. And if you type a new column name by default, for example, if I type date here, that is the column name, okay? And what value do I uh, want to fill there? So let's say 2019, uh, uh, 0, I don't know, 24-06. I don't know if this is the right format, but we'll see. Uh, so this is this is uh, the value that we want to uh, fill, and let's actually do print df dot head. Okay. So now you should see another column called date, and this is the date right there. Okay, that's pretty much it. So I'm not sure if this uh, again uh, what the default is. By the way, if you actually look at dot uh, data types. You can actually see, um, I type data types, D types, sorry. Uh, and let's run this, and it should print the D types. And the date is an object here. It's not a date format. That's because it's thinking that this is text. Okay, it's not considering this as a date. If you want to convert this as a date type, then let's actually, uh, let's, uh, I think let, let me delete this I'm thinking whether I should add a new one okay and edit this and it's called pandas there is a function called to date time okay that's pretty much it to date time and this will convert that into a uh, uh, let's go ahead and first of all print df dot so let's print that and see it does exactly well. We made some mistake here, uh, which is instead of underscore, I did hyphen. Let's run this one more time. Uh, month must be 1 to 12. So obviously, I've done that mistake here. 0, 6, 24. Okay, now let's see if that works. Okay, so now it is actually in date format because we know it yelled at us when we when we got wrong months, you know, uh, mixed up month and the date. But there it is. Of course, we can always look at uh, print df dot date. I always type that d types. Okay, there you go. Let's look at that. And now d type is still in. Oh no, sorry. Date his date time. Okay, previously it was an object when we looked at that earlier. Date is an object. Okay, now it is an actual date. So that's, uh, uh, and now you say, okay, you have this new column and that's fine. And now you can actually write this into a new, uh, into a new CSV file. So for example, uh, let's say I want to add this column and I want to save a new uh, CSV file. All you need to do is uh, two underscore CSV. That's it. Okay. So data frame to CSV and just give it a name. So manual versus auto updated or something. Okay. CSV. And it should just export this. So if I just type it, it should export it. And manual versus updated CSV is up here. Let me open it so we can actually have a look at it. I'm open it, opening it in uh, Excel, so it takes a second for it to open. There you go. Uh, no, that's not it. There you go. That's the new one. Let me expand this so you can see. Okay. So 
it basically added a new column with this new date okay now let's go back and uh, uh, that's that's uh, I think that gives us a good at least enough tools to deal with uh, columns there is a lot more based on the need go ahead and Google search but uh, uh, to do exact you know uh, whatever you intend to do you know from a column point of view but let's jump into let's jump into rows and see how we can delete some rows okay uh, if you want to delete a specific row you know that okay there is a not a number over there and you know the row number so to delete a specific row it's basically uh, uh, let's just do df1 okay equals to df dot exactly like you thought uh, you know earlier we did uh, dot drop a column now I'm just dropping df dot uh, let's say uh, you can use index right so now my index is 0 1 2 3 4 so how do you tell that uh, this is an exact column right there are multiple ways exact row that you want to delete multiple ways the best way is to do by index let me just say uh, drop the uh, index one and let's go ahead and print the f1 dot head so you can see exactly what happened so now we have zero two three four five one is gone okay so that's one way and uh, I'm thinking what uh, let's say you want to delete the first 10 rows um, let's add it after this uh, let's modify this actually uh, instead of df dot drop let's just say df dot there is a function called iloc okay I look and let me just locate 10 so if you print this out you should okay what did I do? Oh, it's these. Okay, so let's hope it works now. So it should drop. Yeah, so it dropped the first 10. It dropped the first 10 rows, and now all I have is the information from 10 and later. Of course, we assigned this to DF1, so if you want a subset, okay, this is a good way of doing okay I want to drop the first 10 but there's a better way I'm going to show you I'm, uh, all I'm doing is showing you a few ways of doing this uh, and you can drop all the rows uh, equal to some number or some value so for example uh, instead of adding more lines let's go back to creating a new data frame and this data frame is nothing but a data frame of uh, for example the first column we still are calling it unnamed U N N A M E D zero, okay? Uh, unnamed. Uh, I should stick with single quotes, okay? Uh, nothing wrong with double. It's just whatever you're used to, okay? So the new data frame is a data frame of what? Of unnamed zero, where it is unnamed zero. I'm trying to find exclamation point is not equal to set one okay so let's understand this this is nothing but I am creating a new data frame uh, where that data frame is uh, the existing data frame DF okay where unnamed zero I should put a space I think that's we have a space there where unnamed zero is not equal to a value of set one which is nothing but give me set two set three set four and not set one that's pretty much it let's actually go ahead and print df one dot head and see okay so there you go it dropped the first 24 and it completely started with set two and of course it has other let's look at the tail it should have you know set four or something so basically we dropped set one that's it okay so this is another way of dropping a bunch of rows now uh what else uh, i think uh, i think that we can stop right here uh, i was thinking about sorting the data let me continue that as a separate video otherwise this becomes a very long uh, uh long video so uh, anyway i hope you understand how to load a csv file how to drop certain columns how to drop certain rows uh, uh and in the next tutorial let's actually uh, talk about how to sort data okay so thank you very much for watching this tutorial again as usual I'm requesting you to subscribe to my channel if you like these videos and please leave comments 
if you find uh, find this video uh, useful or if you have any constructive comments uh, where uh, I can improve uh, on these tutorials. So thank you very much and again let's meet again in our next tutorial.